Okay, hello everyone. Today is Wednesday, January 10th, 2024. It's exactly 4 p.m. Uh, my channel, my ministry right now, is currently on strike. I got a strike uh, Monday night, January 8th, and so I will not be able to post anything again until um, either Monday night or Tuesday, so either the 15th or 16th of January, uh, depending on, you know, whatever YouTube decides, of course. So, I digress. Anyway, I feel led to address a topic that has to do with housing, which is becoming more and more of a topic of interest these days. Um, I just learned last night that there's a term called frogging. Uh, P-H-R-O-G-G-I-N-G. -G -G. You can just type it into uh, to Google, I, I, I suppose. Yeah, type it into your search browser, but you can type it into YouTube, and you will find videos of news reports and, and so forth talking about this. So what this is, basically, and, and I already prayed before I hit record for the Lord to speak through me and all that good stuff. Um, there's my pot pie letting me know that the oven is up to temperature. Okay, please disregard any background noises. I am at an Airbnb right now. Um, get myself on track here. So frogging, frogging. Frogging is when someone is living in your house, in your home, unbeknownst to you. And as I was laying in bed, um, the Lord was really ministering to me, Holy Spirit was reminding me of just things that he has been revealing to me over the years, and I believe it's coming to a head now, and I believe that this is, this needs to be addressed, and I just want to present it to you for your edification, for your benefit, if you are not aware, uh, so that you are aware, and so that if you're led to, you can go, you know, research it more on your own, okay, and pray about it, and so forth, okay? Where to begin, where to begin, where to begin? Okay, so years ago, when I was in my undergraduate program of college, when I was earning my bachelor's, um, I ended up having to take some bottom-of-the-barrel choice elective because I was a transfer student, and I ended up taking some, like, introduction class on, like, environmental studies or something, and um, anyway, one of the class discussions we had um, had to do with the difference of uh, culture practices of people who live in the city versus people who live in rural areas. And I was able to vouch, uh, the professor even called on me to, to kind of vouch for this because I grew up out in the woods. I, my family, we had almost five acres of land out in the New Jersey Pine Barrens. Um, and it's very, very different than the mentality of those who live in the city or even the suburbs, maybe. Um, definitely the city. And so I'm just putting this out there. And yes, could people use this information for evil? Yeah, they could. But I'm using this to warn you, to educate you, to edify you, to warn you. Um, and, and the ultimate point of this video, the exhortation of this video is pay attention, be aware, and lock your doors. Okay, that's the takeaway here. Um, Especially if you're running an Airbnb, I'm, I'm going to address all that as well. But there's things that I've noticed with that as well. And people people who just have multiple roommates and things like that, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be addressing all these different scenarios. But yes, okay, so... Um, now, this may be changing because of, because of how things are changing in the world. But when I was growing up, I was born in 1982, I'm 41 years old... Um, out in the woods, out in the rural area, you didn't usually tend to lock your door, or if you did, you only locked it at night when you went to bed in terms of your, your home, your house, okay? Um, and even your automobiles, you didn't really lock your doors. I know my mother used to keep the keys in a certain spot um, in the car, and the car would be unlocked. And so technically, if anybody wanted to come and just start the car and steal the car... They technically could have. Um, if anybody wanted to just walk into the house during daytime hours, they could have. Um, in, 
it actually kind of became a, a point of tension because once I had moved out and I would come by, I would just walk right in and my stepfather would always get on my case. Knock, let us know when you're here, you know? And I, and I was like, why your family? You know, that's a whole nother topic of discussion, whether or not grown children should be able to walk into their parents' houses or not. Um, but I digress. That's how it was. And the point of the conversation that the professor was having us have in this, this class was just along those lines and, and anything. So anyway, so now fast forward in life, um, back in, what was it, was it, was it 2015, 16, somewhere around there? Um, I was living up in the Denver metropolis area. Okay. And not in like the inner city, but in that general area. And I was considering moving to Colorado Springs and I've had very, very strange encounters in, in my life, just like little one-off random encounters with people, uh, lots of little strange stories. But anyway, I ended up going down to Colorado Springs to meet up with this couple who, um, I don't think they were renting the house. I think they owned it, but anyway, they had a house and they lived in kind of, um, I don't know what you would call it, you know, middle-class America type neighborhood in, in Colorado Springs. Uh, they, they did live in like an actual development, you know, where the houses weren't like right on top of each other, like where I am right now. I'm, uh, I'm not going to tell you where I am, but I'm in like a downtown suburb, uh, and, and like the next door house is literally like only a few feet away. Like that's houses on top of each other. Th this wasn't like that, but you know, not much of a yard and, and whatever. Right. So anyway, it, w there was a lot of things that were of concern about how this couple operated, but they did not lock their doors. And the wife was even sick with a terminal illness and all this stuff. And, um, and they just did not lock their, their doors. And I was actually led at a certain point to write a letter t to their pastor, letting them know about that and many other things that I observed regarding, um, even his own church. Cause I, I, I ended up visiting with them and going to their church and da, 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 da. that's a whole other story. But anyway, I keep digressing, bear with me. But also when I lived in the Denver metropolis area back, I mean, there was multiple instances, but uh, my ex-boyfriend that I was on and off with for a while, you know, he lived in m many different places and he always, he always ended up living in places where there was like multiple parties in the house, like multiple tenants, multiple roommates. Um, I, I, I couldn't stand that. I, it's hard enough to live with like one other party, never mind multiple, um, and, and sharing a kitchen and all that just, uh, but what I observed with these situations, whether it's an Airbnb or whether it's just a bunch of tenants slash roommates, they tend to like never lock the door. And even just recently, even what was it? 2022. I, I stayed at an Airbnb up in Virginia where I was went through, I, I was renting the, the one room downstairs. And then there was like a couple rooms upstairs. And so there was just people in, in and out of this house, this unit, it, it was a house. Um, oh yeah. And th then there was like an apartment downstairs. Um, and it was an Airbnb and the door was like almost never locked, almost never locked. So anybody who wanted to come in there and do whatever, whether it was this frogging nonsense of like somehow squatting in the house or harm someone or rob someone or rape some, you know, whatever, People, if they wanted to, could just do this. And why am I bringing this up? Why do I feel led by Holy Spirit to bring this up right now? I'm bringing this up because recently on this channel, the Lord gave me a rhema message, a, a prophetic word. And the title was something to the effect of how the chaff was about to be thrown into the streets. And I will link that in the description box below for you if you missed that or if you want to refresh yourself on that, okay? Okay. And since then, over the last, I don't know, maybe two weeks, Holy Spirit has been bringing more and more of these videos into my YouTube algorithm, into my thread, having to do with macroeconomics, having to do with housing, um, having to do with Airbnbs, the economy, just, you know, worldwide stuff going on, okay, in terms of just like macroeconomics, okay, which 
you know, if it, it, it affects everything, right? So there, so stuff that isn't being covered in the, in, in the mass news is how a lot of people are being evicted from their home. Like people who like, are citizens of the USA, people who are paying rent, people who have jobs, you know, like legitimate legal citizens here in the USA, they're getting evicted because they simply just can't pay the rent anymore. Um, the moratorium, I think that's the right word, where people could get by without paying rent, that ended a while back. Um, but also now there's this issue here in the USA that, you know, I guess we've got all these illegal whatever people crossing the border from Mexico and whatnot, and they're, they're you know, and, and maybe other places as well. I'm not going to claim that I'm on the up and up on, on all this stuff. I don't go out of my way to pay attention to it. I don't go out of my way to research it or take note of it. Holy Spirit just brings general concepts or general things to my attention, okay? But anyway, we've got migrants here in the USA, and I was just seeing some some videos pop up in my thread um, about how the homeless shelters that were housing these people have now, like these people have now been there 60 days, and now they are being evicted, and they're out on the street, and they are now literally going door to door and knocking on people's doors, asking for food, asking for housing, and what have you. I also saw a video that um, was in England over in the UK. And I am not, again, I am not going to claim to be aware of what's going on in the world. I know that there's a war going on with whatever, UK, uh, Ukraine, Russia. I don't know all the specifics. I don't claim to know the specifics. All I know is that they were interviewing the owners of this hotel in the UK. I think it was called Hatteras or something like that. And the guy, the news reporter who was interviewing them was praising them. Everyone in the comments was praising them, calling them heroes because they turned down, I guess it was like millions of dollars or pounds um, to house what they were calling refugees. Now, maybe I'm missing something. If I am, go ahead and correct me. You don't have to do it nasty though, you know, but just inform me educate me if I'm ignorant on something. It's possible that I am. But to me, a refugee is someone who has been displaced. I, I meant to go re refresh myself on that definition before I hit record, and I forgot to do that because I was running around, running errands. Um, but from what I remember of the definition of what a refugee is, it's someone who has been displaced because of whatever political government war type stuff going on and they are now seeking shelter they're now trying to survive that's that's what i know to be the definition of a refugee and if i'm wrong i will correct myself in the description box below um and everyone's praising these people calling them heroes because they're turning they turned down all this money to house refugees and they were saying that, you know, they don't want the hotel to turn into a dump. They don't want the, you know, the surrounding area to turn into a dump, that it's going to ruin tourism. It's going to ruin business, this, that, and the other. And people just are not, <sighs> Holy Spirit, please give me the right words. You know, like w what comes to mind is the love of many waxing cold. We are at a point right now where the evil elite by design have constructed things in such a way so that, yeah, the world is falling apart. People as a whole worldwide now are in need of housing, are in need of food, are coming into poverty, etc., etc. And then you've got, you, your God has allowed you to be in a position to own a hotel or even just own one house or, or whatever. And there's people in need and you're even and God even wants to bless you with all this money so that you will house these people and you're going to turn them away because, oh, it's, it's bad for business. See, this is what God has been talking about. People worshiping mammon. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get paid all this money, but in, 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 in the long run, you know, then the reputation of my hotel will go down and this, that, and the other. And da, da, da. 
people are having no empathy, no compassion whatsoever for your fellow, excuse me, fellow human beings, okay? Now, yes, I am aware that most of the people on the face of the earth at this point have taken the mark of the beast. And going back to that rhema word that God gave me, he's calling them chaff. If someone took the mark of the beast in God's eyes, they are now chaff. They are going to be burnt. They're going to the lake of, the, of, of fire. And yes, a lot of these people are that. But still, just... I'm, I'm just addressing this this attitude that like no one wants to seem to help anybody else and yes we must be you know uh wise as serpents we must be led by the holy spirit um but i was just taken by this i was just disgusted by this um i think things should be done if possible on a case-by-case -case basis of course you know um, and, and yes, I, I comprehend their point that they don't want the quality of their hotel going down or the reputation of their hotel going down and, you know, tourism. Like, to me, there's more important things to be concerning ourselves with these days than, than whether or not the tourism industry is going to be thriving and flourishing or not. You know, how about just the fact that we all need to survive, you know, and no one, everyone has this like, every man for himself mentality of like, well, all I care about is whether or not I've got a roof over my head and food in my stomach and what's good for me and mine. And of course, we all can comprehend that that mentality. Of course we can, right? I get it. We all can comprehend that. But as Christians, and you know, these people probably weren't Christians. I, I'm sure they, they probably weren't. Um, but as Christians, we're supposed to be the light of the world. We're supposed to reflect God's love and compassion you know, um, and I, uh, anyway, so there's, there's just one aspect that I noticed regarding this whole housing thing and, and how everyone's going into poverty now and yada, yada, yada. Um, but that, that was something that God had me prophesy, I think a few times a while back is how there's going to be a lot of people displaced and yada, yada, yada. And he had me kind of warning about that early last year, you know, be ready to up and go on a moment's notice because you don't know what's going to happen, you know. Um, but let's circle back to this topic of frogging. Okay. I don't know who, who came up with this term. I, but it, it's basically squatting. Okay. House squatting. Okay. But it's not, so I guess usually when you think of squatting, you think of like a vacant house. Okay. And I've been seeing a lot of videos about that as well, where people have these houses that like they're, they're up for sale. They're on the market for sale. They're vacant and there's people squatting in these houses and whatever. But frogging is when the house is not vacant. It's when people are actually living there currently and unbeknownst to them, there's someone living in the attic. There's someone living in the basement. There's someone living in a closet. Okay. And the question is, is of course how did they get in how did they get in well of course they could break something they could break a window or you know pick a lock or whatever right there's breaking and entering right but what i have noticed over the years is that a lot of people make it way too easy for someone to just walk right in because they're simply not locking their doors they're simply not locking their doors. And here's another thing that is of concern with all the Airbnbs. Now, a lot of these Airbnbs, what they'll do is they'll have like a code lock where you have to type in numbers and you get that number through the Airbnb app from your host and all this and that. Okay. But a lot of these places, it's an old fashioned key. Now, whether the key is in a lockbox key outside and you have to have a code to get in to access that key, or whether the key, like this Airbnb, is hanging on like a peg on the wall, and once you get into the house, then they say, okay, here's a key, you can use the key if you so choose, right? What's to stop any of these Airbnb guests from making a copy of that key? When you've got all these people in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, and you're using an old-fashioned key, okay, which, you know, there's pros and cons to everything in this world. One of the things that I don't really like about um, all the hotels and stuff is how they use the, the uh, key cards. And granted, yeah, those locks are run by batteries, but, like, it just makes me nervous of, like, okay, what if something were to happen and then your key card don't work? And, you know, anyway, I digress but you've got all these airbnbs where a lot of these airbnbs they're they're renting out like individual rooms in the house in the unit 
And so you've constantly got people in and out, in and out, in and out. And places like that, again, these people aren't locking the door. People are being lazy. Well, I don't want to have to remember the code, so I'm just not going to lock the door. You know, like that's the mentality. And and again, it, it, it doesn't have to be necessarily an Airbnb. It can just be, you know, somewhere where you've got multiple tenants, multiple roommates and people, again, because they know that they're not the only party in the house, they don't bother locking the door. OK, there was I, I, I've seen this over and over and over again. So lock your doors and check everything like uh, like, for example, right now I'm renting. Um, well, yeah, through through Airbnb, I am renting a um, and I'm only here for like, you know, uh, not even two weeks. Um, I'm renting the side of a of a duplex. A, a duplex is like a house, but it's like split in two, and there's two separate entrances to two units. Okay, so I'm renting a half of a duplex right now. It's like a three bedroom. No, I don't need all that space, but this is where God told me to go so that I could cook a little bit finally, since I missed my housing opportunity back in September. Um, the first thing I did when I got in here, I opened every door, every door. I checked every closet. And there was a door that I was pretty sure went down to the basement. I opened that up and yeah, creepy, dark basement. Dude, how do I know someone's not in, in that basement? I don't know, you know, um, and that makes me concerned because they've got like a little like back alcove room where like the washer and dryer is and the door to like the actual outside that locks and that's fine. But what if somebody who came here as a guest didn't lock it in the past, left it open, and somebody snuck in and went down into the basement for all I know. Now, the door between the alcove and the kitchen, the rest of the house, that door doesn't properly close. It doesn't properly lock. So if, God forbid, somebody is frogging down in this basement, they could technically come through the kitchen and do whatever they want. Okay? Safety, people. Safety. What else, Holy Spirit, that I cover everything? <sighs> Is there anything else I'm forgetting, Holy Spirit? I feel like there's something else I might be forgetting. What else? Yeshua, Yahweh. Anyway, well, okay, let me just pray. Father God, Yahweh, Holy Spirit, Yeshua. If there's anything I am forgetting, Lord, will you please bring it back to me and remind me before I finish recording this video. I ask for this in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Housing is a major, major, major problem right now. And the Lord has given me Ramas recently on this channel saying he wants empty rooms filled. There's no reason at this point with the housing crisis that is going on pretty much worldwide at this point, why anyone should have any empty rooms in their house. Okay. Don't be like my own mother who wouldn't even take in her firstborn child because she wants one room to be her arts and crafts room. Okay. Stop worshiping mammon. Okay. And pray. You don't just want to take in anybody, obviously, or rent to just anybody, but pray and ask the Lord, okay, who do you want me to rent to? If there's someone in particular, please bring them to my attention and confirm it to me. Right. Give me your peace about someone. But that's what he specifically said in a recent word. And maybe I'll find that and pin that, or not pin that, but po uh, paste that in the description box below for you again. Okay. But God is saying we are to help each other. We are to come together as Christians. Okay. And yes, you have to pray about it because a lot of these people in, in God's eyes are chaff. They have taken the mark of the beast. And at this point, um, I know this is going to sound cold, but I, let me, let me phrase it this way. I believe God wants us to help each other in terms of those who have not taken the mark of the beast. Okay. Let's put it that way. All right. And that's like, how are you ultimately really going to know that you have to pray about it? You have to ask God because yeah, people can lie and say that they didn't take it when they did, you know, um, and you just have to pray about it and maybe even fast about it. Do a three-day fast, whatever it takes. Um, you know, and it's between you and God whether he wants you to just take someone in for free 
Is it one of God's anointed? Is it someone who's an officer? Um, does God want you to rent to someone? And if so, how much does he want you to charge? You know, um, why not rent? Why not have some income coming in? And, you know, that's helping you. You're helping them by giving them a place to live, you know, um, and again, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that we have to necessarily take in refugees or migrants or whatever, but maybe that might be God's will. There might be a particular refugee or migrant that God is saying, this person, I, I want you to help them, you know, that doesn't mean you help all of them, you know, but it's a case by case thing and you got to pray about it. Um, but I just wanted to bring your attention to, yeah, people that are out in rural areas, like everyone in general, m my exhortation to you is, I mean, the ultimate exhortation is ask God what he wants you doing, period. That's how you're supposed to live as a Christian. But, you know, lock your doors and ask God what he wants you to do. If you've got s spare, be spare bedrooms, if you've got a finished basement, whatever, you know, or maybe you can even convert your attic into something, some kind of living space for someone, ask the Lord, pray about it, fast about it, and do whatever he tells you to do, because people need housing. And yes, I know, living with people can be a nuisance. Believe me, I know that. But it's time that we come together and we learn how to get along. We learn how to communicate. You know, I was having a conversation with someone via email yesterday, I think it was, and you know, this topic came up of how being that I am such a direct communicator, a lot of people decide to, to take offense to me, you know, just generally speaking, whether it's me or anyone, you know, just because someone is a direct communicator, um, doesn't mean that you should decide to take offense. Um, you know, the, the evil elite have designed our society our modern day culture right now so that everything that is specific and is direct is considered taboo and is considered like people automatically jump to this assumption that that person is being snarky, that, that the person has some hidden motive or some hidden meaning. But often a lot of people who are direct communicators, what they mean is, is what they're saying exactly. And, um, you know, just take it for what it is. You know, um, people from the Northeast of the USA tend to be very direct. We don't beat around the bush. We don't pussyfoot around. You know, we, we say what we mean. We, we mean what we say, hopefully, most of the time. Okay. Um, stop with the assuming. Stop making assumptions. I've preached this before. Okay. In terms of just healthy, effective communication, don't make assumptions. Ask curious questions. And when someone says something, how, how language is supposed to be is that you say what you mean and you mean what you say so that you're communicating your meaning and then the person on the receiving end can just take your words at face value. That's how, that's how language is supposed to operate, guys, okay? So learn how to get along. Learn how to communicate effectively. There is a uh, channel that I've shared a couple times now on the community page called Jimmy on Relationships. And he's giving out really wise counsel in terms of just inner in terms of just communication okay boundaries are boundaries they're healthy they're not a punishment for anyone and if someone at the outset of a relationship whether it's a tenant uh landlord relationship roommate relationship romantic relationship whatever kind of relationship it is at the outset if they say okay here's where i'm at here's what i expect Th th there's no reason to take offense to that. That person is healthily telling you up front, here's where I am, here's my boundaries, here's what I expect, here's what I find acceptable and don't find acceptable, okay? Um, I, I do that even in my housing ads. I, I, up front, I, I ask a bunch of very direct questions because I want I'm, because they're, they're interview questions, and that's what I call them in my ad, interview questions. And I've had people that are toxic say, oh, you've got all these rules in your ad. They're not rules. I'm asking questions to find out, okay, are we a fit? Because here's what I'm comfortable with and what I'm comfortable with, you might not be comfortable with. Or maybe we can find a compromise or whatever, okay? We need to learn to stop isolating ourselves. This whole stuff of being isolated and being lone wolves and all this has got to stop, okay? Because... <laughs> I can't emphasize this enough. I know we all say it, but I don't think anyone, I don't think it's really dawning on so many people. We are in the last few years. 
We are in the last, yes, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for reminding me. That was another topic that I want to address, okay? Not only can you have people coming into your house to squat, to frog, as they're calling it, okay? But what the Lord has been showing me recently and speaking to me about and ministering to me about, and, and I know a lot of people are going to roll their eyes on this, but there are abominations. All the things that we think are myths, okay? Elves, little people, small people, you know, Bigfoot, yada, 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 all that kind of stuff. More and more people are catching this stuff on footage, even fairies, okay? I saw a video back in like 2020 where somebody actually caught this person about yay big, little fairy, and it had wings, and they caught it on camera, and I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, that's fake, and this, that, and the other. I've been praying about this stuff lately. God's been bringing, God keeps bringing the, this topic up of basically abominations, okay? This is stuff that was created by the Nephilim, giants, yada, 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 okay? There's Slender Man. I know one year, one time when I was a teenager, I ran away from home and it was pitch black dark, and I don't even know how many miles I went in the dark, and all I had was the occasional street light and the moonlight, and there was something white and slender on the edge of the woods, like, stalking me. And now I know people call it a, a rake, some people call it slender man, and I, these are all abominations. Psalm 91 talks about the abomination that stalks in the night, okay? There are abominations, okay? And I've seen videos of... Um, there was like a coyote, although the guy in the video called it a dog, chasing what I believe Holy Spirit told me was an elf. And like its legs were like as thin as like this pen. It was it was really freaky looking. Um, and then there's the video in uh, Colorado Springs of this little abomination thing, this little, I don't know what, dwarf elf thing, whatever, and it was, like, in someone's driveway, and they, they caught it on camera, okay, there's all, so, like, not only could you have people coming into your house, you could have these abominations coming into your house, because, again, we're in the last few years, we're in the last few, you know, last days, and part of the fourth seal, which I believe the Lord has told me has been opened, we haven't hit the apotheosis of it yet, but it has been opened, is that the verse in Genesis, where God says that the beasts of the earth, the animals will have, will, 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 will fear Adam. They will fear mankind. That is reversed. Okay. I've been talking about that. We've been seeing all kinds of animals, all kinds of creatures on this earth, losing their fear of man and approaching mankind and attacking mankind more now. Okay. And I do believe that that is now happening with these abominations. The, the, these abominations are coming out more and more and more and, and allowing themselves to be seen more and more and more. And just recently we had this incident in Miami, Florida, just did a video on that, okay? Where And I believe that those are binders. I, I believe that those were the disembodied spirits of the giant Nephilim that were killed in uh, Noah's flood, or at least some of them. Um, okay, more and more and more, you're going to see evil entities. I got news for you, okay? In these last days, now we are not in the last three and a half years yet. That, that, that doesn't commence until Passover of 2025. But I'm telling you, like, you need to be concerned about your safety, okay? In terms of people, but also in terms of these abominations, these evil entities, okay? You don't want whatever creeping into your house, creeping into your basement, creeping into your attic, staying in a closet. I saw a video last night. These three women were living in a house, apartment, whatever, and they had some homeless guy living in a closet, and they had no clue. And they said that they found, like, you know, like, blonde hair in their bathtub when all of them had black hair, and there was clothing missing, and this, that, and the other, because they had a homeless person living in their house, frogging in their house. How you don't know that? How do you not know when someone's in your house? That's beyond me. Pay attention when you hear little noises, okay? Pay attention. Be aware of your surroundings, okay? I've heard the, the term, what, situational awareness and, and whatever, okay? Um, lock your doors. Lock your doors. You know, I, I used to oppose my, my, my father. See, I, I had two houses growing up. My parents divorced when I was two, and I was always between two houses, my mother's house and my father's house, and they were very different in many, many ways. My mother's house, I was out in the woods, it was rural, we didn't really lock our doors, yada, yada, yada. I already went over that. My father's house, we lived in more of a 
development, although it was on kind of the low socio socio economic end of things, especially now. And my father, like the second we got home, he would lock the door behind us. And I would always like kind of even like make fun of him. Like, why are you locking the door? You're paranoid. No one's going to. And, and, and we lived on like a, a dead end. And, you know, I was like, no one's going to come in our house, you know. But now I realize the wisdom in that. OK, you get home, you lock your door. I've even shared videos on the community page about how nowadays people are attacking, especially single women. Um, that's another topic. But uh as soon as someone gets in their car or parks their car, people are like crawling up to the, let me get my words, to the side door, to the passenger door and like opening the door and trying to grab women's purses off the passenger seat and stuff. Keep your doors locked to your home, to your vehicle, to your automobile. And here's something else that God just brought to my attention in the last maybe day or two. Okay. I used to have a sizable purse. Okay. I don't even know if I got something here to give you like an idea, but I used to have a purse about yay big, okay, and, you know, it had everything in it, it had all these compartments, and yada, 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 and it was leather, and it looked nice, and this, that, and the other, and everything, right, okay, and God told me at the beginning of 2023, about a year ago, he said, I want you to donate that to Goodwill, get rid of it, okay, and he had me downsize, and now I'm using this tiny little purse that I bought way back when and I never thought I would actually use it. This, I can put right over my body like this. It makes it more difficult for someone to try to grab it off me, steal it from me, okay? And I've got the bare minimum in here of what I need, you know. Um, women, pray about it, but, y you know, it, it, the if you've got like a big purse like that, it might draw attention. And even back when I was living in Colorado several years ago, um, I would put my, my, my big purse, you know, right where they have the, the, uh, children's seat in the shopping cart. I would put my purse there and then I would like walk away from my cart for like a second to go grab something. And I actually had someone pull me aside one day in the grocery store and say, stop doing that because you could get your purse stolen, you know? And I was like, valid point, valid point, you know? Um, well, nowadays I'm seeing all these reports, like in the last few days, okay, I'm seeing videos coming up of news reports where people are not just robbing stores and stuff now, which was prophesied by people like John Paul Jackson and stuff, okay, but people are now robbing people in the grocery store or outside the grocery store, stealing women's purses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I advise it might be time to get a new purse, to get a different purse, to downsize, get something that you can just put over your body easily, you know, because, um, you don't want to be one of the easy targets. Okay. So this, this video in general is just about safety and security. Okay. Um, be aware. Okay, it's gotten to the point now and it's only going to get worse where people are poor, people are in need, people need food, people need housing, people need money, people need and people um, are resorting to sin. Okay, and at this point, most of the world has taken the mark of the beast. And so they now belong to Satan. They are now ruled even more so, all the more so by Satan. And so you need to be safe. Okay. Holy Spirit, is there anything else you wanted me to say? I think I covered everything now. All right. If there's anything else I need to say that I forgot, or if I need to correct myself on anything, I will put it in the description box below. Um, and I will put those two videos of the Rhema messages. One was about the chaff being thrown into the street. What was the other one I said? I'm going to have to go listen to this, but I will put any links that I said I would in, in the description box below if, if God wants me to. Um, I think that's everything. So, wow, almost 40 minutes. I bless you all in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth.